how did the Lord give me boldness? You know, I got a couple of comments on my channel um, about boldness. Um, brethren, I believe, that uh, wanted to know how they can be bold like they have seen me in my videos. And uh, brethren, first of all, I just want to say that uh, the boldness that you see uh, in most of my videos is not of me. It's not of my flesh, but it's of the Holy Ghost. It's of the Holy Spirit that does the work through me. And uh, if you are saved, if you are a brother or a sister in Christ, just know that you too can have that boldness. And um, But there's a difference, you see, between being bold uh, with your flesh and being bold with the Holy Ghost. Um, you know, as we'll go into the scriptures that I'm going to share with you today, um, you know, the Lord led me to to make this this video uh, because uh, boldness is something that uh, that I've prayed about for to the Lord, and it's a subject that I think is pretty important. Um, and the scripture that the Lord showed me uh, hopefully it can edify uh, you, brethren. Um, and um, I'm also going to to share with you my experience of how um, how the Lord gave me boldness. You see, when I was, uh, I'm going to start with that, you see, in this video, because uh, I think it's important to share with you all uh, to help you understand where I'm coming from. You see, when I was uh, lost, when I was younger, you see, uh, I was very introverted. Um, I was very much afraid. I was afraid of what other people thought of me. Um, you know, um, I grew up in a, grew up in a in a household where, uh, you know, I I was, uh, I felt very much discouraged. You know, uh, I grew up in a household where, you know, there was a lot of fighting, a lot of it was very toxic at times. You know arguing, you know, and uh, just wanted to run away, just escape all the shouting and stuff like that that's going on. Uh, you know, lost lost parents, and I was lost myself. Um, so what ended up happening, uh, folks, is that, uh, you know, I, I became, well, you know, how when we are when we're lost, where, you know, we only have our mind and thoughts on things on the earth so everything in my life was just about uh you know trying to please men and trying to please my parents and uh you know my parents made me feel discouraged and worthless like the scum of the earth you know at school at high school middle school you know growing up i felt like uh, a loser uh i didn't have much friends growing up I was an outcast, you know, I felt like I never fit in with anybody. I tried to fit in with people and that led me to sin. Uh, in school, in the public school system, don't take your kids there. It's very dangerous. And, uh, you know, uh, when I was there, I, uh, I, was, I was very much afraid of, of trying to, to fit in with the world, be friends with the world. And I was very much an enemy of God at the time. And uh, I was very fearful, and the Lord hates fearful people. You know, it's something we need to keep in mind, brethren. Um, that uh, a lot of the time when we're when we're new Christians, and, this, and the Lord helped me overcome this, but I still struggle with it. I'm not gonna say I don't struggle with it still, you know. But this 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 uh, fear of man, this fear of what men think of us, you see, is is uh, is not it's not good. It's not good to have that fear because fear is a sin. We shouldn't fear. We shouldn't fear uh, man. Now, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, fools despise instruction, right? But but the fear of man is, is a snare, very dangerous. And, um, you know, at the time, folks, you know, uh, that's how I was. But, you know, uh, I got saved. Uh, I, I was born again, um, you know, the Lord knows, uh, you know, my true intention in my heart, 
It was either in 2015, and then there was a large gap of just uh, would hate Stobo, or I was saved in 2021. I believe that's when they, things truly started to change for the better. Um, but yet, yeah, you know, you know how the Lord works. Sometimes it just takes a long time to sanctify somebody. And uh, I, 2015, I had an emotion experience. But in 2021, I believe is when the Lord truly showed me of my how wretched of a sinner I was. And, um, you know, I was going to a church building. Uh, I was exploring, you know, trying to find the truth, who believed the truth, trying to study, you know, uh, all this, all these things, right? And uh, it was called the Church of Christ in Schaumburg, Illinois. The, the head elder of that church building was called Glenn Job. And uh, you, know, you can look it up if you want. Um, and this uh, elder, 70-something years old, you know, I found out he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, but anyways, uh, you know, at the time, I was also praying. Uh, uh, There's a lot of things going on at the same time. So I was going to this church building. I was beginning to doubt whether I should be in the church building at all. You know, the Lord led me to Brian Denlinger's, uh, uh, which is a brother, uh, Born Again Barbarian on YouTube, uh, his videos about church buildings. And I started to look in the, in the scriptures that he, that he shared in those videos. And, and I was convinced, according to the scriptures, that it was wrong. It was, church buildings are very much wrong and very dangerous. And... Uh, you know, I had that in my back of my mind, and uh, there was one more service I was going to attend. I was, that was at the time that's that's where I was that was that's where I was at, and uh, and this church building, um, you see, uh, the service was in uh, the service in this church building was in uh, Easter of 2022, Easter Sunday. That was the last service I was going to attend. Now, a few weeks before that, the Lord had put some some thoughts in my mind. Uh, about uh, putting on a sackcloth suit, you know, and I've been praying. I was praying to the Lord about, you know, uh, overcoming this fear of man or uh, helping me to to not be a, a, a man pleaser. And, uh, you know, that was one of the first things I prayed for when I, when I was born again in 2021. Um, and uh, in October 2021 uh, or November, uh, around that time, is when I started to shift, you know, and the Lord started to show me more and more truth. Um, and, uh, and I was praying for all this, and I was, you know, I made the sackcloth suit. You know, I, I was watching this. There was this uh, street preacher. His name, it, the, the ministry is called Torch, Torch of Christ Ministries. I don't recommend, uh, you know, to adhere to his doctrine or to what he believes. Uh, you know, he claims to be a Christian, um, but yeah, I, I, I would, I, I don't think he's a King James Bible believer. I don't think he believes, I, I mean, I don't know exactly what he believes. Uh, that's why I don't recommend his channel uh, or his uh, ministry. But anyways, at the time I was watching a little bit of his videos and, you know, he had a video about uh, how he, uh, how he decided to make a sackcloth suit and, uh, and he did some street preaching with sackcloth. And anyways, that watching his videos kind of gave me, uh, you know, that idea in my in my head, and I started to research about sackcloth in the Bible, and and who wore sackcloth, and in the Book of Kings, talked about uh, one of the kings of Israel, he was um, he was wearing sackcloth as a way of showing repentance, and sackcloth and ashes to show repentance towards God, and and, and it's a it's a way of being. Uh, humble all, all through the scriptures it talks about sackcloth and ashes sackcloth and sackcloth and sack it's everywhere in the scriptures really and i started to realize that and i was like huh you know maybe that's a way that i can uh try to be humble or try to try to not care what people think of me if i wear that but you know i was still very afraid of man i was very doubtful whether i should do this or not and it was that easter sunday folks and the lord put this thought in my head Wear the wear the sackcloth suit, and uh, put put ashes on your head, and walk down the aisle, down the lane, uh, all the way up to the pulpit. Um, and and if you want to get over this fear, do this. And I and I felt I felt I felt like 
uh, I didn't want to do this, but the thought was in my mind and it, it was just um, whether I would obey that thought or whether I wouldn't obey that thought. And, you know, it was a last minute thing. I almost chickened out. I didn't want to do it, but I'm like, no, I have to get over this fear of what people think about me. So I put it on. I couldn't find ashes. <laughs> I didn't know where to get ashes. I was living in the apartment at the time. So I was just like, you know what? All right, let's look at my in my in my spices and <laughs> I just there was some onion powder and I put some onion powder all over me and I was just like, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> let's do this. I want to get over this fear. And I, my my adrenaline was, you know, pumping. You know, I was I was very much you know, kind of scared, you know, uh but I was like, you know what? I have to do this. And I and I put it on. I, I drove to the place. I drove to the church building. My last service there. And um, I walked straight through. Everybody was looking at me as I was walking. You know, I came a little bit late. So the service already had started. Everybody was looking at me. All these eyes on me. It was, uh, you know, you know, for me at the time, it was kind of terrifying. But, but I went through it. I got through it. And you know what? Um, Throughout that service, I was crying. I was crying, you know, and people noticed, people looked at me um, and, uh, you know, and uh, I, I, I was I was crying uh, silently throughout the service. And, uh, and I knew that I had to get out of there. Um, and, you know, a couple people went up to me, but most of the people didn't mention a thing about me wearing sackcloth and ashes. Uh, just somebody asked me if it if it was part of a reenactment or something, or why what, what was I dressed that way? And I said Jesus uh, led me, or Jesus told me to do this, you know. And uh, and I told them about the sackcloth in in the Book of Kings, and um, and then I I, I left. Uh, you know, there was a I said I said goodbye to a couple of people that were there. Uh, saying I will keep you all in my prayers, you know, and, uh, and I left. And that was the beginning moment where the Lord started to change things in my life. Uh, you know, and, and before that, I, would, I, had never have, I, I had never street preached before. But after that moment and watching Brother Brian's videos of, and the Lord leading me to truth through the scriptures, through the uh, word, uh, the word of the Lord, the word of God, the King James Version, uh, you know, it, it was an amazing thing. Um, you know, I got out of that church, church building, that Church of Christ, Church of Christ, right? And uh, uh, I, you know, I have so many stories I can share with you about, you know, me street preaching and how the Lord showed me how to be bold with with the Spirit and not being bold with you know, through my flesh. And, uh, and I, I, you know, little by little, the Lord led me to, to, to learn how to street preach correctly uh, with love and not with contention and strife. There's a difference, folks. And, um, and how to, not to fear man, you know, and it was, and, uh, you know, to this point where I'm at, you know, I still struggle sometimes, but for the most part, I've overcome that fear uh, and I'm very grateful to the Lord because he has given me the, the ability, ability to, to, to preach in a way where not many people preach in this way because of the lack of faith. And I give all the credit to the Lord, you know, and all the glory to him. And, and, and you, too, can have this boldness. If you ask, you will receive, folks. And I just share with you the scriptures that hopefully will edify you all. Um, so let's continue with the, with the, with the study here. I have some notes here. Um, so that's that's one of the ways I got over the fear of man. And um, let's continue. So I'm going to share the scriptures now. So let's go to First Peter. So we can turn to First Peter. Okay, folks. It's going to be First um, uh, Peter chapter two. Okay. First Peter chapter two, verses one and two, it says, "But there were false prophets also among the people." Oh, that's the wrong one. That's Second Peter. It's First Peter. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, all right, as newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. 
folks, uh, we can't be starving uh, anemic Christians. Uh, if we're babes in Christ, if you're a new a new Christian, if you have, uh, you know, I haven't been Christian for too long, but, um, you know, what helped me grow spiritually is is the Word of God, and that's one of the main ingredients and one of the main things you need uh, in order to grow spiritually. You need to read the King James Bible. You need to read the King James Bible. You need to listen to the King James Bible. You need to put it in your mind. Put the put the words of the Lord in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, and 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 and, and that's one of the main ingredients for you to be able to grow in 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 and in, in, uh, as your sanctification process continues, you know, and and God will give you boldness if you ask Him with faith in Him, you know. We got to remember that the Lord, the Lord is in us. The Lord Jesus Christ is inside of us. His Holy Ghost is inside of us, folks. We can't forget that. You know, we can't fear man. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? So, let's continue with the study here. Proverbs uh, thirteen. Let's go to Proverbs in the in the Old Testament. Hmm. Let's see here. Proverbs chapter 13, um, verse 13 says, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So you can't despise the word, folks. If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to be bold for the Lord, um, you know, we need to we need to seek after this uh, sincerely the word of God. You know that that milk of the word. We need to we need to we need the milk in order to grow as babes in Christ into uh, into being a full age. You know, and uh, just remember this: that the Christ Christ is in us, right? And uh, the Holy Ghost will work through us, folks. And the character of Jesus should shine through us. You know, and uh, we have to. Allow the Holy Spirit to do that. We have to allow the Holy Ghost to do it. Allow Jesus to work through us. Because if we quench the Spirit, you know, and adhere to our flesh, then, uh, you know, we're going to produce corrupt fruit. And we don't want to produce corrupt fruit. We want to produce good fruit, you know. And that good fruit comes from the Holy Ghost. You know, we, if, we, if we produce uh, corrupt fruit, that comes from our flesh. So we got to make sure... That whatever we do for the Lord, whether it's teaching, whether it's preaching, whether it's evangelizing, whether it's um, miracles or whatever you're doing for the Lord, it has to be through faith, through faith in the Lord. All right. Whatever gift that God has given you, you must do it with uh, with faith in his Holy Ghost, with faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, his, his Holy Ghost will work through you and speak through you. And shine upon the darkness of this world. So, um, let's see here. Let's go to uh, Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's see here. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, very important verses here. They're all important, right? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having an on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, the word of the God, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto on, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Very important as well. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth, listen to this, boldly, right? That I may make no, uh, known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, 
that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So we ought to speak boldly. But there's times where, you know, the Lord is uh, mentioned in, uh, in, the, in the Gospels, right? That we should um, be as wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. You know, um, folks, think about this. A serpent goes out and attacks its prey like that. So us, sometimes we need to act like that serpent. We need to be wise as a serpent and attack the prey. You see, attack, you know, and, and, and rebuke harshly, you know. But there's times where we need to be as harmless as a dove. You know, when a dove is, 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 is threatened with danger, it flees away, it flies away, right? Sometimes we got to flee danger just like a dove, you know, and we got to we got to learn uh, to discern situations to discern. Um, you know, I still struggle with this myself. I'm not perfect in that respect. Um, far from it. But um, I that's something we need to keep in mind, uh, brethren. All right. And uh, putting on the whole armor of God is very necessary. If you're missing one of those pieces of armor, uh, folks, you're in trouble. Uh, you need you need faith. You need prayer. You need the shield. You need God to be protecting you. You need the helmet of salvation. You need the sword of the spirit. Um, you need to have your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness, and not your own righteousness, but the righteousness that was imputed unto you uh, when you were saved, when you were born again. If it is that you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost in you, which uh, you know. If you haven't believed in vain, right? Um, so very important things right here. Very important scriptures. Um, if you want to be an ambassador for the Lord, we need to be, and we uh, and, and we want to be bold for the Lord. We need to make sure that the character of Jesus is shining through us, and and His boldness, and not our boldness, right? And His wisdom through His Word. That's why that we need that. We need His Word. <laughs> All right. We need to grow spiritually um and ask the lord for discernment as well so let's go to proverbs chapter 29 proverbs chapter 29 proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 says um the fear of man bringeth a snare but whoso putteth his trust in the lord shall be safe um very very true statement right there very true um you know the the word of god is always true folks and it's an amazing thing the fear of man bringeth a snare you can't fear man and if you do you're going to get caught in that bear trap folks you're going to get caught you know and you're going to be hanging from a tree you know you know the 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 rope's going to get you that that snare you know, that set up, you know, um, that that's what happens when you fear a man, you know, but um, but if you trust in the Lord, he'll keep you safe and uh, he'll guide you to discern, you know, between situations, when to be bold, when to, when to not be bold, to reflect that character of Jesus. You know, Jesus hung, was hung on a tree and in the and and, you know, he. He, you know, and cursed is everyone that, 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 that hangs from a tree, right? But uh, the Lord was made a curse for us so that we might be saved. And it's an amazing thing what the Lord had done for us and what he has suffered for us. You know, it's an amazing thing. And uh, we can't fear a man or else um, we'll be caught in, in the snare and be hanging from a tree or be or have a our legs cut off or whatever the bear trap whatever kind of snare you think of we got to we got to not fear man very important folks um now let's go to psalm chapter 21 psalm chapter no 27 my apologies 27 verse verse 1 says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is my, the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid? All right, the Lord is with us, folks. Can't forget that that He is He is literally inside of us. 
His Holy Ghost is inside of us. And sometimes I forget. Sometimes we forget. But we should never forget that. Because when we forget, we lose our faith. We need to know that the Lord's eyes are over the righteous. You know, but he's angry with the wicked every day. We gotta we gotta remember this and 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 you know stay away from the technology for a while, you know, something I struggle with too. And just look outside, look to the heavens, and understand that the Lord is watching. He's watching everything we do. He is inside of us when we are saved. We can't forget that He's always with us. Jesus said, um, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Remember that, folks. All right, let's continue now. Um, let's go to First John. First uh, John, chapter four. It's going to be in the New Testament. First John, chapter four, seventeen through nineteen. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness. Right there, there's that word again in the day of judgment, because as he is. So are we in this world. We, we, we were made unto his image, right? When we were born again. Or we should be, right? If we are uh, born again, right? There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. Did you hear that, folks? Fear hath torment. You know, fear is not a good thing. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Folks, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is, is Jesus Christ working through us when we have faith in him. But when we believe not, you know, nothing, nothing occurs. And if anything occurs, it is of the flesh. So, folks, um, we need to make sure that we are made perfect in love. That's the sanctification process. You know, it's going to take time, folks. Um, and I'm going to share a scripture with you coming up next about that in the book of Galatians. Um, but if we want to be made perfect in love and be bold for the Lord, um, we need to cast out that fear. Um, and we need to let the Lord do it through faith. Um, ask him in prayer and He and you will receive it. S sincerely ask the Lord and he will. He will provide what you seek after if it's according to his will and um, he will reward you according to your faith okay so let's continue uh galatians let's go to the book of galatians um and just remember this that we love him because he first loved us <laughs> something to remember too it's a very important part of the verse as well uh galatians chapter four let's go to galatians chapter four Galatians chapter 4, uh, verse 19 and 20, okay? It says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. And uh, there's many Christians in which I truly do stand in doubt of. I've met on the street and uh, while I street preach and uh, many you know, brethren online, you know, I don't know you, uh, you know, personally, so I, I can't, I, I can't say it, you know, 100%, but uh, we shouldn't be doubting our salvation constantly, but folks, we need to reflect, it, you know, we need to examine ourselves, whether we be in the faith, lest we be reprobates. Um, um, we need to make sure we're not just professing God, but in works, we deny him and unto every good work reprobate, we, we can't be like that, folks. We, we need to make sure that we're saved and fear God and to work out our salvation with fear. Very important, folks. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyways, um, like it says right here, um, it's the sanctification process in verse 19, right? In whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. So it takes time for Christ to be fully formed in us. You know, it, the more we let go of that fear, you know, the more perfect we'll be made in love. The more perfectly we'll be able to, to, to shine as lights in the world, allowing the light of Christ to shine through us, right? Very important. Very important to consider that. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says, um, 
and feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Folks, faith. If you want to be just in God's eyes, you need to live by faith, and your faith will be counted as righteousness. You know, it's not that you're righteous. It's that, you know, you're submitting yourself to the Holy Ghost and allowing the Holy Ghost to work through you and, and by faith. And the Lord looks at that as righteousness because you're submitting yourself to him and you're loving him and you're keeping his word. And, uh, you know, you're having faith in him. And that's what he requires. You see, for by grace, through faith, are we saved that not of works, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. Right. In Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and nine talks about that. Now let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, it, we need to hear the word of God. We need to, we need to read the word of God. We need to, 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 to seek after, search the scriptures, seek for that sincere milk of the word so that we may grow spiritually. Folks, um, you know the, the 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 Bible has answers for all whatever you're feeling, whatever you you whatever you want, whatever you seek, in the according to God's will. If it's according to God's will, you're gonna find it in the Scriptures. Uh, look look through the Scriptures. Get yourself a concordance. Get yourself a the Word Searcher program. Um, I highly recommend Word Searcher. Um, you know, if you're hard at if it's hard for you to memorize things, I am very bad memory. I have very bad memory and. You know, those the concordance, uh, the book of the uh, Strong's Concordance uh, and um, and the word searcher program uh, has really helped me um, to identify what the Lord is putting in my heart. Because I, I, I read the Bible. I listen to the Bible. Uh, Alexander Scorby recording a narration of the Bible. Very good. I recommend that for all of you. A very good narration. And uh, just, you know, put the word of God in in your mind, in your thoughts all the time. Stop listening to worldly music. Stop listening to hymns. I really don't think it's necessary to listen to hymns. You need to sing with hymns through, with your heart. You need to sing with melody to the Lord. And just get close to the Lord, and the Lord will give you boldness, folks. But you need to be living by faith. And um, and faith cometh by hearing of the hearing of the word of God. Just remember that, folks. All right, let's go to the book of uh, Philippians. Philippians. See here, Philippians. It's going to be in the New Testament. Uh, there we go. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 14. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Did you hear that, folks? Without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Like I was telling you guys all before, right? This is where I got it from because the scriptures tell you that there's going to be people that are preaching with strife and envy, you know, and uh, and then some of goodwill. There's a difference there. So one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice. Yea, and I will rejoice. <laughs> For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Folks, uh, did I, well, let's see, Philippians verse 20. Yeah, so, so that right there is telling you folks that there is going to be people that are going to be so-called Christians, and they might be saved. I'm not saying that, you know, just because somebody's preaching in strife or not, you know, but we got to learn to, the, the, you know, we got to ask the Lord to help us learn um, to preach with the Holy Ghost and not with our flesh. Like I said before, right? We don't want to be causing strife. We don't want to be causing, um, um, you know, uh, strife and, 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 and debate right contention we don't want to be like that there's many street preachers and out there that are doing that 
And we, we got to make sure we're not like them. We got to be as different from the world as possible. You know, all those street pap- street papists out there that believe they can earn their way to sell, you know, to, to be to, to heaven. You know, stay away from all those people. Make sure you're as different as them as possible. Get yourself the King James Bible. You know, I, you know, we need to be uh, wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. And uh, a lot of a lot of those street preachers out there are just serpents. They're just serpents. They're not harmless as doves at all. They're just serpent, serpent. You know, attacking, 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 attack. Sometimes we just gotta flee. We gotta we gotta flee like a dove, like a harmless dove. You know, and <laughs> it, the Lord can give you that discernment. And, you know, the Lord has helped me tremendously with that. And I, I know He can do that with all of you as well if you have faith in Him. All right, all right, brethren. So let's continue. Um, let's go to the book of Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four, um, verse twenty-nine. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So when we're preaching out there, uh, when we're uh, witnessing to the Lord, we got to make sure we're not, um, you know. We don't have corrupt communication, you know, swearing or cursing. You know, we got to make sure we're not we're not uh, saying foul language, you know, promiscuous kind of like uh, uh, intimate kind of like language or, or wicked language. You know, it's speaking about, you know, intimate intimacy, you know, or things like that. We don't we don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. We don't want to put uh, w- uh, wicked pictures in people's minds about, uh, you know, things like that. Just stick to the language with that's in the scriptures, and try to quote the scripture as much as possible, because hearing faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, not by the words of men. And uh, in the verse thirty, says, "Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption." Uh, I, I didn't mention that, but that's very important to remember too. If we're sealed, we're we're one hundred percent sealed, folks, and we cannot lose our salvation. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. We got to make sure we don't grieve the Holy Spirit and allow that flesh to work through us. All right. Just another reminder. And now let's go to the last verse I'm going to share with you all. Okay. It's uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2. Okay. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Um, verse 14 through 16. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Again. You know, very important to, to understand that we're not out there to debate people, you know, that when you're witnessing, you know, when you're preaching, when you're evangelizing. We got to make sure we don't get into murmurings and disputings, folks, um, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. King James Version, folks. The King James Version right here. Oh. King James Version. Make sure you have the King James Version, folks. And uh, and like it says right here, you know, we need to hold forth the word of life. Now, a lot of when I start street preaching, I, and I still need to work on uh, this, uh, getting rid of some of these signs that I, because a lot of them are like uh, signs that the street papers use, and I have one. And I've been using it, but uh, I've been kind of convicted about it. Maybe I, I think about getting rid of it and not using it ever again because I don't want to be associated with the street papers. We need to be as different from all those other wicked street preachers out there as possible, uh, brother. And if we're Bible, King James Bible believing Christians, born again King James Bible believing Christians, we need to be as separate from the rest of the world as possible. And uh, you know. As you can see right here, um, we need to hold forth the word of life that I, and that we may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Uh, there's a lot of people that labor for the Lord in vain. They're, they seem bold for the Lord, and yet they, they, they're not doing it through faith. It's through their flesh. We've got to be able to discern the difference, be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves, like the Lord says in his word. And um, folks. I hope this video was edifying to you, and just just know that with uh, with man these things are impossible. With but with God, all things are possible. You see, He changed an introverted uh, loser 
a worthless, you know, person like myself, had no friends pretty much growing up, you know, and, uh, you know, God, God chooses those that are despised in the world. God chooses, he, he doesn't choose those that are noble, that are high, high minded, you know, God chooses those that, that are lowly in heart, you know, and, and those that, that, that the world hates and, 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 you know, it's an amazing thing what the Lord has done for me and he can he can give you boldness as well you know you know the most introverted person can become the most extroverted person you know through the power of the holy ghost and um and i hope that this video was edifying to you all and just I give all the praise and all the glory to the lord jesus christ um and yeah praise the lord <laughs>